Oh, gotcha. I, I've looked up a couple of different vegan restaurants. I'm not vegan, but man, I love vegan restaurants. They're so much better than regular restaurants. Because if you're going to sell vegan food, um, it better be really damn good, right? Uh, so, yeah. Um, are, you, are you flying in? Or? I'm driving. Yeah. Does anybody have a favorite vegan place here? Does anybody eat vegan restaurants, go to vegan restaurants at all? Everybody's afraid to try them, but I tell you what, man, you try them and they are awesome. Um, I have a, like my brother was here, my brother's a big meat eater, and I took him to Dixie Dharma, and um, he uh, he got their, it's, it's called the Orange Bird, it's like their version of a barbecued chicken sandwich, like pulled chopped chicken sandwich, I don't know. Anyway, it's, it, it, it's all plant bear food. And he was like, this is the best chicken sandwich I've ever had. I mean, like, he's a huge meat eater, so it says something. Chicken sandwich at a vegan place? Yeah, it's not real chicken. I mean, it's it's fake it's chicken. Thinking, it yeah. Like chicken. It doesn't really even taste like chicken, to be honest. I think a lot of places try to make their stuff not taste like meat because vegetarians and vegans are just like, most of them don't want something that tastes like meat. That's why they're vegetarian. <laughs> um, but anyway, okay, uh, I'm recording and talking about stuff that we don't need to talk about. The um, when your book describes uh, this this next form of um, coding, I think it's really interesting how they describe it. They say uh, <laughs> that uh, the, the let's say that you want to give some sort of talk. And you have uh, grouped states in the U.S. by various groups, and you are going to use the South as a as a reference group, but yet you don't put the South in because it winds up being your zero group, and some Southern senator becomes extremely uh, offended that South isn't included in their in, in your uh, model. And, and so in order to do something else, it's a weird way of describing it, I guess, but in order, there are any number of reasons why you might want to not have just a strict comparison group, right? You will still have a comparison group, sort of, but um, it, it still winds up being the G minus one. But in this case, what we're gonna do is we are gonna compare all of these groups to the average on, on the whole, like across the entire sample, right? This is called an unweighted uh, contrast or an unweighted comparison or unweighted coding. Um, and the, the way that we do this is, uh, it, it's very interesting. We will set still a comparison group as minus one. Then we will set our uh, predictor group, our group one as one, and then everything else as zero. If you think about this, if you take a step back, what are we actually doing by setting one, as, one group as zero, one group as one, one group as minus one? We're doing something here. Centering? Yeah, we're centering, that's exactly right. And you, are winding, you wind up centering then across each of these different conditions, right? Now, let's do this. What, when we center, we've done this in the past, and when we center, um, what, what does our intercept become when we center? It, 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 the, the mean becomes zero, but in a regression model, what does our intercept actually become once we've centered variables? The mean of the dependent variable, right? Yeah. So let's do this quick. Let's go transform. Oh boy, I bet that this is going to be harder to do than than what I had done before. Um, let's see if we can't uh, grab that. Somebody is going to have to just walk me through the code. Can somebody grab the code off of uh, or that I that I had posted? Um, and let's let's see if we can do this. Where do I go to actually type stuff in in SPSS? And so where is where is syntax found? What's that? Should be one of the extra SPSS. File open. There we go. Syntax, right? Oh gosh, that's not what I actually want. 
Yeah. Oh, file new syntax. And if I type stuff in here now, it will run? Yes. Okay. So we are going to go, um, let's call this unweighted group one equals minus one if What was our other, what was our group here? Shoot. Drinker equals equals, oh, equals zero. Will that work? No, I have people shaking their head. No, that won't work. At the very end, right? Yeah. No, oh. oh, okay, is that how it works? Thank you. Compute. <laughs> All right. Um, unweighted group one equals one if drinker equals one. Unweighted group one equals zero if drinker equals two. Can I put or? If drinker equals three. Execute. You think that'll work? No, I don't think if is just a command. What? It doesn't understand if? What does it tell me here? Error. The first word in the line is not recognized. What's that? I think you have to say it's a variable. How do I do that? Okay, can somebody open up the code that I had wrote? Because I think I had I had copied that from something and then tried to like redo it. That might work. Nobody can? Thank you. Okay, so what do I do? So do I need to just go like this? Compute UW group one equals minus one. Is that right? Your code is compute x one equals zero if group equals one if one equals one. Compute x two equals zero if group. Okay, hold on. All, all of that is in one line? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that's your code. I don't know if this will work either, but let's give it a try. Compute x1 equals. OK, compute x1 equals. So if we go compute w group 1 equals minus 1, that should work, right? Yeah. And then we can go if. I mean, the blue means it's detecting it as code, so. If. Drinker equals zero, space, uh, drinker equals one, <laughs> UW group one equals one, if drinker equals two, UW group one equals zero. Oh, I didn't like that. Oh, do I have to put a period back here? 
And now if drinker equals three UW group one equals zero period. And then you have to whenever you're done, you know, yeah, you always have to be executed. Alright, should we try this? Is this what is this what you guys think will work? Who thinks this will work? I don't think it will. It won't because it's okay. Why? It does here. It looks like it exists. It worked. I have enough to do in the afternoon. Okay, so uh, is is everybody? Th this is this is the correct code that we need. Okay. All right. So let's then change this just to group two compute w group two equals minus one if drinker equals two group two equals one drinker equals zero group two equals zero if drinker equals three group two equals zero that looks correct doesn't it oh wait 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 wait, wait. group zero should always be that's not correct um, I'm just gonna delete this one so I screwed that up all right back to group two Group two equals minus one. If drinker equals one, group two equals zero. Ah, there we go. If drinker equals two, group two equals one. If drinker equals three, group two equals zero. That looks right. And now let's make group three equal to minus one. If drinker equals one, group three equals zero. If drinker equals two, group two equals zero. If drinker equals three, oops, I'm sorry, this should be group three. Group three equals one. All right. I think that this should work. How's that look to everybody? Let me know when you guys are caught up here. Yeah, so what we're really doing here is um, we're setting the uh, zero group to be minus one. And then we're, we're, we're setting the kind of focal group in, across each one to be one, right? Did it work? Did you guys run it? It worked for me. It worked for you guys? The yeah. yeah, order nine. No? That's a nine from you? <laughs> Do you have periods after each one of the things? Nope. Well, it computes a variable, but the variable has no values.
So what happened is, like, I see it after Yeah, you created a variable to start with, and then it was wrong. I didn't change it. It would just, it would get hung up every time. Does everybody have it now? Are we good to go? Who does not have it yet? Okay, flip over to your data one. Go to data view. Rollover. Or one of them. Delete all three of those. Here, let's real quick. Uh, go back to your syntax. Okay, does everybody have it now? Who who does not have it yet? Nobody? We're all good to go? Okay. So what's the next step then? What do we want to do next? Anybody? Nobody? Somebody? What's that? Put them all in a regression. Let's do it. Um, so we're going to go analyze regression. Actually, before we do that, uh, let's go, let's go um, analyze descriptives, explore, and let's just look at urgency again. And our mean for urgency across the entire sample is 1.9653, right? And that is my full sample, right? Yep, 1598. Okay, uh, so if we go analyze, regression, linear, and we get rid of group one, group zero, group two, and we put in the variables that we just created. Whoops. Um, now we don't have, we still have a zero group, but our zero group is now coded as minus one. And then for each of the other groups, we have one, and then we have zeros for the uh, other two groups that are in there in, in, in our coding. So each one of these should now be centered, right? That means that our new intercept should be what? Before we hit go, what should our intercept be? What's that? The mean, of the, the mean of the dependent variable, which is what? We just checked it. What was it? 1.96. Let's run that. And we scroll down. 1.988. Why isn't it 1.96? What is going on here? Let's scroll back up. 1.988 versus 1.9653. Why isn't it exact? What's the deal? Better. 
No. Something is off, right? What is off here? We'll come back to that. So we have a we have a, an an intercept now that is 1.988, which is close to but not exactly the mean, right? Um, and then we have these uh, coefficients. And what do these coefficients actually tell us? <coughs> what is that? What is the coefficient for UW group one? of minus 0.123. What does that mean? No pun intended. Then the constant that's listed yeah. right there, right? And so that's not actually minus 1.23 lower than the mean of the entire sample, but the mean of that constant listed right there, which is 1.988, right? So we can we can calculate that out. We can figure that out if we go. Um, somebody somebody grab their calculator and tell me what uh, that that value is. Let's go data. Select cases. If drinker equals one. Okay. Okay. Um, analyze. Descriptives, explore, urgency. We have 1.8648. 1.8648. And what was our plus 0.123? And I get 1.9878 or 1.988, right? So that's exactly right. That mean is exactly um, 1.23 away from the constant, but it's not 1.23 away from the actual mean of the data set, right? Because the mean of the data set is 1.96. So these coefficients in each one of these cases are the coefficient, or the, the distance of, of that group's mean from this uh, constructed intercept that should be, but isn't, the mean of the entire sample. Why isn't it the mean of the entire sample? Let's go back to this question now. Is, is group one centered? How can we find out if group one is really centered? Let's check that, shall we? Analyze, descriptives, explore. And let's just go, oh. I'm gonna hit okay, but then I'm gonna go back and select data. So data. Select cases, all cases, and now I'm going to rerun that. Analyze, descriptives, explore. For group one, our mean should be zero. Huh, 0 0.0625. Boom. And there aren't. They are not equal numbers of minus ones and zeros. This uh, approach will work perfectly if what? Yeah, if, if n within each group is identical. If we had four groups with 100 people in each group, then it would work perfectly. You would have four minus ones, you'd have, or four, uh, 100 minus ones, 100 ones, and 200 zeros, and that would be centered at zero, and you would be good to go. However, it's not centered, right? It's not truly centered, which means that our intercept is going to be slightly off. And that's exactly what we see here. 
This is why we call it the unweighted coating. How do we weight this? How do we change this coating so that our variables are weighted according to the number of n, or the number of people in each group? Daniel, you're right. You divide the group, um, your, your base group, by um, your, your zero group by whatever your coded group is, right? So let's go and do this. And relative, relative to the reference group? Yes, the, the reference group or the zero group, yep. So let's do this. Let's go. Um, how do I get back to, there we go, this stuff here. Let's copy these three. We're going to do something else here. Um, we need to have the number of people in each group, so let's go um, analyze, descriptives, frequencies, we have drinker, hit OK. All right. In our zero group, we have 209 people. So 209 is going to be the denominator for each one of these. So we are going to change all of these from W group, or from UW group to W group. Let's do it just like this. And let's do it all the way down. All right. We are going to do it like this. Minus 1 times... Three fifty two over two oh nine, and that will make that will change our reference group to be a portion or relative to the um, comparator group, right? Same here for group two, we will go times. Seven sixty one divided by two oh nine. And for the last one, times, and I'm doing times because I want to keep this negative, right? Um, two eighty six divided by two oh nine. Two eighty six divided by two oh nine. And let's make those. Okay. Now we should have in this sample a bunch of minus 1.68s. There they are, a bunch of minus 1.68s. And now if we take the mean of W group 1, so the, the, the reason is because we have a lot more 1s here than we do minus 1.68s. But if we take the mean of this, what should we get? What should the mean of W group 1 now be? It should be 0, right, if I did my coding correctly. <laughs> I did not do my coding correctly, apparently. Hmm. Oh. 
what am I doing wrong here? I mean, yeah, so my reference group is this group, right? 209. All right, we will figure this out. Three fifty two, seven sixty one, two eighty six. Hmm, hold on a second here. Let's let's try one other thing. Just to make sure that, that what I'm saying here is correct. I'm just going to double check this. <laughs> um, that is why. That's right. Um, it, actually, it's not the, that it has to be centered. Um, that was my bad. It's that across all three it has to be centered, right? Um, and so what that means is that uh, when you multiply out your three different things and then add those up, you should come up with zero. Um, so uh, my bad, um, but uh, the approach was still right, right? So our, our I, I forget that when we do contrast coding, it's actually a three-step process and not just a, um, a, a simple centering two-step process. Uh, so when we do this, though, we see that our constant, just, just to clarify, we did do it right, OK? Um, we see that now our constant is uh, 1.966, which is our actual centered value, right? Like if we go analyze, descriptives, explore, and we put in urgency, the mean of urgency should be 1.966. And 1.965. Three uh, is pretty dang close. I'm double click in here once. All right, so um, anyway, <laughs> uh, it does not wind up coming to exactly a centered value. Let's, let, let, me, let me double check that I'm, that I'm actually doing this right because this is starting to bug me a little bit, but um, I'm positive. Yeah, that is right. OK, well, that makes me feel a little bit better. Um, all right, so it's coded correctly. Um, our intercept is coming out the way that it roughly should come out, right? 
Um, and now, uh, so we have a constant here that is the intercept of the actual um, data, right? And each one of our coefficients, yeah, yeah, yeah. Question, does it have something to do with the, the variables that are at, like, that had nothing in them? Because they code as the 1.37 and the so we have missing data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's missing data, right? That's what the deal is. Frustrating. Okay. Yep. Nope. You're exactly right. Um, and so it's it, that's why it's off just a just a little bit here, right? Because in some spots we have missing data, but in uh, the actual um, code, when we redid that code, we didn't account for the fact that there's missing data, right? Ah, yes. Thank you. Um, okay, so uh, let's assume that there wasn't missing data, and then we can just assume that this all worked out beautifully the way that it was supposed to, right? Um, the uh, constant then, 1.96. Um, the group coefficient here of minus uh, 0 0.101 is actually what? Say it. It shows how much dif the difference between group one and, well, group zero, basically, constant. It's not really group zero. What is that? What is that constant? What's that represent? The mean, the mean, the mean of the dv across all groups, right? right. So it, what it shows you, go back to what you're saying then. So it shows that for group one, they the, the mean of group one deviates by my, from the urgency of all groups by minus 0.10. Perfect. That's exactly what it says. Um, so here's the take-home message for today. Um, when we are using contrast-coded groups or dummy-coded groups or weighted or unweighted groups, we're always talking about some mean, right? And for the most part, that mean, because dummy coding is, is the way that we often wind up comparing groups. Um, that mean is the, the, the average of some group and the every, every slope coefficient is the difference in means across groups, right? So with contrast coding or with um, categorical coding, it's, we're always talking about intercepts. We're always talking about means. We can use those kind of interchangeably, right? And we're talking about differences in intercepts or differences in means. Next week, we are going to add interactions to our groups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if we have a categorical variable as a moderator, should we, because we cannot center it in the way we center the continuous variable, Right. Some of you probably realize that there's some issues with VIF in your in your yeah. exam. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Uh, so, can we use a uh, like? Should we should we do a weighted uh, dummy coding of the categorical variable to reduce the VIF? Or will it reduce the VIF or not? Um. So a yes, it will it will reduce the VIF. B it's unnecessary. So VIF is problematic when you understand, when you know that it's problematic. Um, in this sort of situation, you're going to have uh, inflated variance, but your F and your R squared will all be continue. It will it will be the same. It's not going to. It's not a problem when you have categorical variables. There are people that will say that you should center regardless, right? But um, it, it doesn't affect your overall model. Case in point, um, here is our regression model, and here is our, our F. Note that our F actually changed a little bit because of the missing data issue that we were talking about, right? Um, but uh, this should be, in, in the case of no missing data, exactly the same. And our R squared should be exactly the same, and it does actually stay exactly the same here. Uh, we just have slightly different F because we have predictor value or predictor variables now where there are no um, dependent variable values, right? So, um, 
if we actually scroll up to, well, actually that will be, we'll have the same case for our unweighted as we have for our weighted. But um, yeah, so you don't have to worry about that. What we will look at when we look at categorical variable interactions, we will be talking about next week the fact that the main effect of a categorical variable or a main effect of a grouping variable is always associated with the intercept, right? The interaction effect of a grouping variable or categorical variable with a, with a continuous variable is the difference in slopes across those groups, right? And it will work exactly the same way that we're doing this right now. Like you can, you can add or subtract that, that slope for the categorical variable for the dummy coded variable. And it just gives you that, that effect in that group, right? It gives you the mean in that group. And next time you will add, you can add the slope from the interaction piece to the main effect slope. And it will give you the slope in that group right? It, it's going to be the exact same principle. So the principle here is taking that slope for the group and it, it affects the intercept. Next week you're going to be taking the slope for the, inter or for the interaction and it will be giving you the new um, slope for the, the main effect. Um, that will make more sense next week. Uh, for this week the important piece is the main effect of a, of a if a dummy coded variable is really just the difference in intercept from some reference group or from the overall data set if your reference group is the data set itself, right? Does that make sense? Is it confusing? I think it will make even more sense next week, but um, so here's here's what I'm wondering. Um, I am wondering if we should uh, do a homework assignment on this or if we should uh, roll the homework assignment for this week into the homework assignment for next week because you're going to have to do the same thing again next week and that gives you more time to work on your exam this week absent of uh, additional homework. Thoughts? That's what we want to do? All right. No homework for this week. Uh, next week's homework will encompass both this and the next thing, which I actually I think it's easier to understand when you roll those two things together anyway. But. Um, all right, any questions, comments, concerns for me? No? Okay, then that is it for this week. Um, I will uh, see you guys in a week. And I'm... It,